Hey, you there! Take my shopping cart, too! Uh, no, Karen. I won't do that. What do you mean, now? What is your name? I'm going to talk to your manager. Oh, really? How scary. Look at what I have here down my belly. Now, for every likes this video gets, one Karen will become smarter. So please, smash that thumbs up and notification buttons. To the story. No, I'm not your co-worker. I've been a long time lurker, but today, it finally happened to me. I went down to do some early Christmas shopping. I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but I love Christmas. I went to an outdoor store that was having a sale on cozy socks I thought my brother-in-law might like. I was browsing all the different patterns when this interaction happened. For simplicity's sake, I'll be me. The store manager will be SM. SM, hello, um, can I help you find anything? Me, no, thank you, I'm just browsing. SM, uh, do you need me to bring more socks out from the bag? Me, uh, no, that's alright. I'm fine with what I have. SM, well, the shelves won't be very stocked with those just few pairs. Me, uh, what? SM, aren't you stocking these shelves? You really shouldn't be shopping while you're working. Me, looks down at my green sweater and jeans I'm wearing that look nothing like the blue uniform. Uh, no, I don't work here? SM, uh, if you don't work here, then why are you stocking these shelves? Me, uh, I'm not, I'm shopping. This circular argument went on for another few minutes until I finally walked away. I'm not sure he ever got that I didn't work for him. How can a manager not know his own employees? Well, dang, you quit on your first day. You're so cool. To the second one. Yes, but I'm just shopping. I worked at Home Depot years ago. One time I was actually off, but had to run in and buy something. Anyway, a guy asked if I worked there. I tell him, yes, but I'm off today. I'm just in to buy something. I'll help you though. I then spent like 20 minutes helping them. I think I sold them a push mower or something. Anyhow, once we're done, he says something along the lines of, Oh, uh, you know, you really should be wearing your uniform so people know you work here. Again, I tell him I'm off today, just shopping, and I helped him to be nice. Dude went up to the front cashier and complained that I wasn't in uniform and was rude to him saying that I didn't work today. <laughs> wow, so you helped someone on your day off and then still got complained for not wearing your uniform on your day off? Oh, I'm shaking my head so much right now. The third story. Lady expects me to take her card, gets flipped off. This happened a few months ago. To set the scene, I'm in the Costco parking lot, and I've got my infant in a carrier stripped to my chest, so pretty obvious that I don't work here. I had just unloaded all of my bulk-sized goodies into the car and was returning my cart to the coral because I'm not an animal. Along the way, I saw a stray cart, and since I had a free hand, I opted to return it to the coral as well. As I'm walking back to my car, some Karen three spaces away from the coral tries to flag me down. Karen, wait there. I've got only a few more items to unload and you can take my card. Me, uh, nope. Didn't break my stride and kept on walking. Karen, what do you mean now? What is your name? I'm going to talk to your mana. At this point, I turn to walk backwards, point to my baby, flip her a double bird, and turn back around so I wouldn't walk into a car. Karen's face turned bright red, and I thought she was going to have aneurysm, but she didn't say anything else. Baby didn't wake up either. Oh, what a power move, and you described it well enough that I could picture it all in my head. To the fourth story. Lost job two weeks ago, but my old boss keep texting me, insisting I do work. At first, I responded politely, explaining that I cannot help anymore because I don't have access to relevant systems, and I'm also not an employee. Have a new job and I'm busy. I then cut conversation short as boss was a nightmare to work for when I was there and didn't want to get into it with them. Boss then responds a day later, insisting I call to help with another, different issue that I know they don't need my help with. As it's such a simple and self-explanatory task, I was laid off because my role no longer required, apparently. 
and I left a great handover log and was super thorough in handing everything over. Gave Boz plenty of opportunity to fact find for me. I was on notice since last October, so there's no way they need my help except from the forgetfulness slash laziness on their part. Not only that, I got utterly shafted with the severance pay and despite being in a great position to help me, this boss wouldn't lift a finger to make my situation better. I literally don't work here, lady, just stop texting me. I know I can just block their number, but it's, it's a bit delicious to see it happen because I predicted they'd still require my help. Well, you could tell her you're happy to help and that your consulting fees begins at $75 an hour, minimum 4 hours. The fifth story, old granny mistakes me for a gardener. A few weeks ago, I was working the lawn in my new house. I had just moved in with my wife and we were really working hard to make the place homey. I was already finishing up the lawn when I saw an old granny slowly walking towards me. I turned off my lawn trimmer so I could say hello and not have anything fly towards her. When she came up, she kindly asked me, uh, Excuse me, how much do you charge per lawn? I looked at her a bit confused, but after remembering my attire, I had a hat, some gloves and safety glasses on, and since I was new in the neighborhood, I understand that she had mistaken me for a gardener. I looked at her and said, Hello, um, how can I help you, ma'am? She kindly told me that she wanted her lawn mowed, but she doesn't have much money as she lives alone and if I was willing to take 20 for the work. I looked at her place and saw that the lawn in question was incredibly out of control as if it wasn't mowed in months and since it was a small area, I told to the kind granny, Don't worry, ma'am, I'll take care of it. The deed took me almost 20 minutes to finish mowing and an extra 10 to take the trimmings and clean the surrounding area. After I was done, she came out of her small house with a tall glass of water, which I accepted gladly, and proceeded to hand me the money. That is when I said, don't worry about that ma'am, I'm not a gardener, I'm actually your new neighbor. I did it because I wanted to, not because of the money. She immediately apologized for the confusion and told me that she was ashamed to ask me something like that. I told her not to worry about that and that it was something I did out of the bottom of my heart and if she needed help with her lawn, to please call me again. She began to cry and thank me profoundly and began to tell me her story. Turns out that she was living alone for a while and that her husband died a few months ago and she didn't have anyone to help her as all of her children were living in the US. After the tale, she thanked me again and we went our separate ways. Now, every time I helped her with her lawn, she always gives me a bag of fruit from her mango trees or banana trees and a tall glass of water. Well, that's a great wholesome I don't work here lady story. Glad to hear that you helped her for free. And mangoes are very expensive. The sixth story. Please understand before one of us dies. I work at a college, not as a teacher or teacher's assistant, but as Dynamics 365 specialist. So, I'm in the IT department, but I'm not the guy who comes to your desk to fix your computer. I'm an expert in a specific system. This all means that while I do work here, I do not work here. Where here is the desktop services team, this is relevant because... One day, I'm at work in the IT office and I hear a knock on the door. For reference, the actual area we work in on the second floor of a building, the other floors are used for storage and there is a single staircase that connects them. At the bottom of that staircase is an access control door. If you don't have the code, you're not getting in. So I get up, lock my PC, head downstairs and open the door. I'm faced with some random teacher holding a laptop who shoves it at me and says, This is broken. Fix it or give me a new one. Do it now. My response is the classic, I'm sorry, I'm not the part of the desktop services team. If you would like to leave me the ticket number for the ticket you've raised, and I'll get one of the technicians to contact you when they get back. Teacher engages Karen mode. Give me a new computer. You IT people, you're so lazy. All you do is play computer games all day. We know you always lie to us. She goes on, I stop listening. I respond with a repetition of the previous statement, and when she doesn't listen, I just close the door on her. 
This is where it gets really fun. Her response is to throw the laptop at the door, laptop zero, door one, and then shout that she is friends with the head of IT and will get me fired as she storms off. So I pulled out my phone and called my boss. Coincidentally, my direct boss is the head of IT services and she is amazing to work for. I explained what just happened and asked her what should I do. She, my boss, asked me if the acid tag on the laptop is still in the wreckage by the door. This lets us find out who is the person responsible for the laptop. Long story short, my boss talks to her boss and she gets fired for gross misconduct and destruction of company property. Ah, yes, the classic. I don't know how something works, so all the experts must be scamming me. The seventh story. You want an appointment with me? Sure. This happened a few months ago, but the problem had been going on for years. Every other month, I would get a text message from someone asking for a doctor or to make an appointment. I start off immediately informing them that they've got the wrong number, but hey, it happens. When it started happening more frequently, I dealt with the minor annoyance by trying to have some fun. Uh, is Dr. Lee available? Me, well, there's no Dr. Lee here, only Dr. Wong. Dr. Wong number! It was funny, until volume of messages started increasing and I got annoyed. I called the clinic to inform them of this problem and that they needed to do something about it. Change the font, spell the numbers out, or even change your number. I just wanted the messages to stop. The lady just brushed me off and said there was nothing else she could do. I asked to speak to someone in charge but was denied. She told me to change my number or just deal with it. So here comes the part where I dealt with it. After an odd month of peace, I received several messages over a week asking to make an appointment. Hi, uh, I would like to make an appointment please. Me. Well sure, the next available spot is next Friday at 10. Would that work for you? I made very sure never to claim that I represented the clinic. If anyone asked for a specific doctor, I would say there's no such a person here. And if they did ask for the clinic, I'd inform them they got the wrong number. Basically, I had myself covered and I tried to have everyone's appointment at the same time. When Friday came around, I received several angry replies from those people and a call from the clinic. Messages went generally like this. You are a terrible person. Why would you do this to waste my time? Why did you pretend to be the clinic? Me. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I run a PC repair service. Except I don't take appointments via SMS nor my personal number listed. I was expecting you at 10, but you didn't show. If you looked at your message, you never asked if I was the clinic and I never claimed to be. And the call went like this. CL clinic lady. CL. Hi. Who is this? Why did you pretend to be us and arrange for all these appointments? Me. Well, I called you months ago, letting you know about this, but you told me to deal with it. So, I set appointments up for them to see me. It's not my fault that they show up at your door. Maybe you should change your phone number. I hang up. Sure, I felt a little bad I made those people travel to the clinic, but since then, I've stopped receiving messages from random people and after checking on the clinic sites, they now have an online appointment making system. Well, you did deal with it. Smart way, actually. To the final story. Don't hold a meeting in the soda aisle. Short and stupid. I live in upper middle class suburb of NYC. Some of the people in my town are a bit entitled. Anyway, on to the story. When I work from home, I dress very casually, basically sweats, and I don't bother shaving. I find weekdays to go shopping to be the best as the store is not too crowded. I wanted to get some diet soda for the weekend, and a well-dressed late 20s or early 30s man was on his phone standing in front of the soda I wanted. I said, excuse me, and he rolled his eyes and said, Just because I'm wearing a suit and talking business on the phone doesn't mean I work here. I replied, I just need to get what you're blocking. He huffed, mumbled something about lazy people who don't have a job to whoever was speaking to and moved over. Now, if that was the end of the story, I wouldn't have bothered posting, but of course, it's not. I heard him mention a type of case in our local state courthouse, next town over is the county seat, in the same practice era of my wife and I practice in, when we were practicing law. I closed her firm when she passed, just wasn't the same. 
Our county is small enough so that if you're practicing for years, you know most of the lawyers and judges in your era of law. Still a little annoyed from our interaction, I decided to play a bluff. I asked, uh, are you talking about type of case in front of Judge X? Startled, he replied, why do you want to know? My response, it sounds like the case my wife and I are opposing counsel on in front of the Judge X in courtroom 123 next week. Dude turned very white very fast. He was indeed talking about a case that was going to be in front of Judge X next week. Fortunately for him, I remembered our case was the following week to let him know that he hadn't just royally messed up, followed with his suggestions, he may not want to have those type of conversations where he can be overheard. Moral of the story? Don't have a confidential conversation in public, and don't underestimate some slob dressed in sweats. Yeah, moral of the story, don't make assumptions about me based on my appearance. Nice. That's it for today, fellow humans. Thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.